The purpose of this recording is to identify when to use residual values and which amount. A lease contract can contain one a residual value guarantee, an unguaranteed residual value, or both. Now bear with me, guys. We need to work through the principles. Then I'll explain them to you, and we will look at a basic scenario. In terms of Appendix A, our residual value guarantees will be a guarantee made to a lessor by a party unrelated to the lessor that the value of an underlying asset at the end of the lease will be at least a specified amount. Back to basics. Remember, if we look at our lessor, we need to determine is this a finance lease or an operating lease? In terms of our finance lease, remember, we need to determine our gross investment. And to be able to do this, we need our discount rate. When we look at our lessee, in our lessee's records, we will have to recognize our right of use of our asset and our lease liability. To be able to calculate the lease liability, which is your present value of your payments, we need to determine our interest rate implicit of the lease, this percentage, and we need to determine our lease liability, the present value. But in your interest rate implicit of your lease, guys, there might be a future value that you need to include. In your lease liability, there might be a future value that you need to include. Important, when you look at your lease liability, remember, from whose perspective are you calculating this? You are calculating this from your lessee. Therefore, the amount that your lessee expect to pay at the end of the lease term should be included in your future value. Okay, now, residual value guarantee. They indicate to us that this is the amount that an unrelated party guarantees to the lessor. Look at our scenario on your left side screen. Therefore, this can be another party, guys. This red party can provide a guarantee in terms of an amount that will be paid at the end of the lease term. Yes, or important, or this can be your lessee. Therefore, they indicate to us the unrelated party referred to above. If it is the lessee, the amount expected to be paid by the lessee under the residual value guarantee will form part of the lease payment of the lease. Therefore, if this is an amount, guys, either by a third party, guys, you need to think about this one with me. If this is an amount either by the third party or by your lessee, if there is any amount expected to be paid at the end to your lessor, you need to include this as your future value. Okay, now they take it one step further. The value included in the lease liability with regards to any residual value guarantee will be the amount that the lessee expects to pay to the lessor due to the asset being disposed of at a value lower than what the lessee guaranteed the lessor will obtain. Okay, guys, do you see this? They indicate to us. Now, let me take pink. Think about this one. Remember, our lessee will have to pay an amount to the lessor, and then they indicate at a value lower than what the lessee guaranteed the lessor will obtain. Let's look at this basic example. In this example, lessor and lessee as always, then they indicate to us, should lessee limited guarantee the lessor that the machine will be sold for 18,000 at the end of the lease term. Therefore, our lessee indicates to the lessor that our lessor will be able to receive 18,000. It doesn't indicate that the lessee is going to purchase this, guys. Then they indicate to us, the fair value of the asset is estimated at 20,000 at the end of the lease term. This is a fair value compared to 
our lacy has guaranteed that our lacy thinks that our lacy will be able to receive twenty thousand. Now the requirement states that we need to calculate the interest rate implicit and the lease liability to be recognised in the lessee's records on initial recognition. They provide us with the following: we have our lease term three years, lease payments annually in arrears, and our fair value at commencement date of the lease three hundred thousand, and then the estimated fair value at the end of the lease term being our twenty thousand. Now, when we need to calculate our interest rate implicit of the lease, we need to include the twenty thousand. Now, why the twenty thousand and not the eighteen thousand? If you think about this as a normal transaction, guys, we will have to include the value that our lessor will be able to obtain. At the end of the lease term, when our lessor dispose of this asset, to be able to calculate our interest rate implicit of this specific lease, okay. Therefore, our lessor will be able to receive this amount at the end. Obviously, we're going to take the higher one. I would rather receive twenty thousand at the end than eighteen thousand. Therefore, we need to use the highest between these two. Then you will identify in the next section how I have applied this. Is when you look at this, I will indicate to myself that my lessee has guaranteed the eighteen thousand, and we have a fair value, and this is twenty thousand. Now the fair value is the higher. Therefore, I'm going to use my fair value in terms of my interest rate implicit of my lease. Okay. Now let's have a look at our amortization table. When you look at this, remember this is the amortization table from our lessor's point of view, and our lessor will receive the twenty thousand at the end, guys. Final payment. Remember, therefore, this will be the future value included in your calculation for your lessor. And you are able to identify that the capital portion being repaid, guys, three hundred, three hundred. Okay. Then, when we look at our lease liability, not sure where this nine comes from. When we look at our lease liability, guys, we need to determine the lease liability for our lessee, and our. Future value will be zero. Why? We need to look at the value that we expect our lessee to pay. Therefore, the eighteen thousand guarantee will not form part of the lease payments included in measurement of the lease liability, since it is estimated that the asset will be sold for more than the value that the lease has. Lessee has guaranteed. Now let's look at our amortization table in terms of our lessee. Guys, we've determined that our present value of our lease liability is the two eight five four one eight. And then when you look at your capital column, zero future value included, and this will be two eight five four one eight. Therefore, guys, less. Do you see? This is less than the. Fair value of your asset at commencement date. Therefore, based on this, we can identify that our lessee will not obtain the full benefits of this underlying asset. Then you can work through example two.
three. 